Hi, my name is Andre Jik, hope you're doing good. And today we are reacting to a millennial millionaire couple and seeing exactly how they make their money and how they manage it. So without further ado, let's start the video. My name is Kevin, I'm 28 and I make just over $5.75 million per year. Can you imagine making a million a month? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but for California, that's like, what, 50K a year? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My name is Lauren, I am 30 years old, and I make $250,000 per year. 250K is also pretty insane. I would be happy with that. I mean, as a, yeah. You'd be happy with 20,000 a month? <laughs> I mean, I could, I could, I guess I could kind of settle for that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. I wonder how many properties she's managing to make 20,000 a month. I'm a real estate broker and real estate investor. And lately I've started making YouTube videos to teach what I know about investing in real estate and stocks online. I am a full-time mother and also full-time property manager managing our own properties. It's not like a mansion. Or no, it's a very reasonable house. Reasonable, but within means. Watching this, I'm like, oh, I should have become a real estate agent. Oh, one of the best things you could do is to invest and become a real estate I'm telling you to do that. I'm like, Corey, come on, get on it. Don't, don't say it out loud. What do you mean don't say it out loud? No, I'm just like shy, like I haven't really started, started. A typical day for me starts at about 5 a.m. Then I go down to my garage office set where I have a walking treadmill and I'll catch up on whatever projects we need to work on for our real estate. That's amazing, he really kills two birds with one stone. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's work ethic is probably the craziest I've ever seen from anybody. Yeah, that's like to awesome. get up at 5 a.m. to go on a treadmill as you're researching for videos. That's dedication. That's insane. I mean, he definitely deserves like his income. Mm -hmm. After that, by about 2 p.m., I like to go on a run with Lauren, so I get a little bit of fresh air outside since I'm mostly stuck in the office from <laughs> 5 to 2, answering text messages or calls or filming videos. After the run, I'll catch up on emails a bit again. I'll look at properties and projects that are going on, existing renovations. And the goal is to have this dropped dead deadline by 5 p.m. of just hanging out with the kids. Yeah, because like most people that are making this kind of money and that are running this kind of business, like they don't make time for family. Mm -hmm. so the fact that Kevin's able to do everything, he's like a super dad. Well, especially when you have a family, start your day early working and then have a hard stop so that you can spend time with them. Yeah, that's really cool because I don't think I have that. Well, you don't have kids. We well, do have a, a child. We have a child right here. <laughs> what are you talking about? A typical day for me would be setting my alarm for 8 a.m. but knowing that my children will be waking me up at 6 a.m. So I get up around 6, 6.30 every day. Oh, that's the opposite for me. <laughs> she wakes <laughs> up mean, later. My alarm is for 8, but I I wake up at 12. No, <laughs> I mean, I try to get up by noon. Uh, <laughs> it's really tough some days though. <laughs> hey, what time do you get up, Corey? Uh, like 10. I could do 10. <laughs> I would love 10. So when I was 18 months old, I moved from Germany with my family to Florida. And in Florida, my parents knew nothing about American culture, society, how to get ahead. They barely knew how to speak English. And what's crazy about that is I, I came from this household that ended up divorcing when I was six years old, constantly having no money. There was a point when I was seven years old where I went through the Washington Mutual Bank drive through and my father withdraws with his debit card $20 from the ATM. And I'm, you know, classic seven-year-old, like, oh, dad, can I have that? And he's like, Kevin, I only have 11 of these left. That's definitely like a a heart dropping, a stomach dropping moment when you realize that for your parents too. My question is, do people that uh, come from, I don't wanna say poverty, but like come from a struggle or whether it's an immigrant or just a family that has a hard upbringing, if that propels their kids to want to be more successful and escape, the lifestyle that they grew up in. Is that something you think that affects or? I think, yeah, of course. But then there's also the other side of that where it's like it kind of inhibits them even more. Even as much as they want to try hard, it doesn't really pan out for them. Sure. So I think there's always like that message to keep trying no matter what kind of obstacles are in your way. But I also think that certain characteristics, I don't know what that X factor is when you are growing up in that kind of a family, when you have less resources that you want to be more successful mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happened to me like my parents didn't have any resources and so I told myself and I remember being a little kid and promising myself that I would never want to have 
problems with money. And mm -hmm. so. Yeah, look at you now. Millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> and coming from that to meeting you and both of us basically being at zero, having around six, eight thousand dollars each, somewhere around there, and going into becoming real estate agents, being property managers, investing in real estate, using the mentorships that are all around us, and taking that and then just making our own reality happen has been really empowering. And if anything, I can look back and say, wow, it kind of makes me want to share that story and say, anybody can do this if, if we were able to do it. I mean, that's true. I remember when you and I met, I had a job at the time and I was earning maybe $60,000 a year, so I was doing pretty good. But you were in college still and you were finishing up and we were both in our relationships at these moments where I wasn't earning any money and yeah. you were earning money and then we switched and I was earning money and you were not earning. Like we've been all over the place, both, and we've stuck together despite the fact that we've had moments in our lives where we weren't earning anything and we were helping each other out. Yeah. So I think having a partner that's both like-minded financially and goal driven is extremely important in mm -hmm. you know building that success. Yeah, you see that with Kevin and Lauren definitely. It's things like this that they can visually see other people online what they are able to accomplish. Oh, for sure. I think that's one of the coolest things about YouTube and about watching videos like this is you could see a person's journey and this couple that like started from nothing and knowing each other since they were so young and then getting to this point to get to where they are took so many little steps of hard work and sacrifice and compromise and helping each other out that I think is really inspiring. Some of my earliest memories were going on appointments with my mother who was a very, very highly successful property manager. And fast forward until I was 18 when I was studying and getting my real estate license, I then chose to follow the career path of my mother and work alongside with her and do professional property management. That's super cool because your dad is a real estate agent for a while since you were growing up, right? Yeah. But I, you had like no interest in it. Well, because every weekend we'd spend like, because he was also a handyman, so he actually did all the construction work for right. houses to flip them. Right. And I was there every weekend. So you kind of hated it growing up. It's not that I hated it, but I, I just didn't feel like it was for me. That's so interesting that like two people can have a similar upbringing, seeing their parents have similar career paths and one chose to maybe pursue it and the other is like, no, this isn't for me, just based on your experiences growing up with it. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. I, like the, I guess the takeaway for me is like, if I have kids, do I want to expose them to the same things I do and to what capacity do we want to expose them to, right? Right. Because it could lead them to either be inspired by what we do or be just turned away by whatever it is we do because we force them to do the things we don't want to do. Right. So it's kind of interesting, like just based on seeing the two people, Lauren and you, mm -hmm. and how your career paths diverged simply because of how your childhood experience was. Well, I guess the only person to answer it would be Lauren because she had the positive experience. Right. Regarding our finances, I deal with most of the bills. We do keep a spend tracker between us. So anytime one of us goes to a store and spends money on something, we just use like an Apple numbers spreadsheet that links between us. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Um, That's a lot, $13,691. I don't want to judge people for their spending because I know that Kevin and Lauren are very financial, like, they are uh, smart. Yes. Okay, but housing, 3,712. Let's compare it to how much we spend. We can compare, but the, I don't think it's fair because it's they're not. in a five bedroom. They, yeah, and they have bath, kids, for sure. Kids. But just- California. Ha yes, for sure, that is true, that is true. That is a apples and oranges comparison, but 3,712 is actually not bad for California and a family of yeah, five. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's amazing. Our rent is $1,400 a month. Split between three people. Split between three people, so we pay 450 to $500 a month between each and every one of us. Food, $2,100, <laughs> that is a lot. I don't know the first thing about having kids, but I don't know, would our food bill really be $2,100 if we had kids? It depends like on um, the area you are and how much the food and the groceries will be there. Hawaii. Vegas, like, <laughs> oh, Hawaii, let's not talk about that. Yeah, $10 a gallon milk. $10 for a banana. Yeah. You have to consider the options of like wanting to eat organic versus not organic, you know? Right, right. Um, and maybe for them, it's a little bit important for them to be healthier in the food that they eat. I mean, I don't want to spoil the magic trick if you're an organic eater, but definitely watch Penn and Teller's episode oh. on organic organic food. <laughs> kids school? Yeah, 1357, no comment. I don't I don't know anything about kids schooling. Maybe it's not that they're paying for the school, they could be paying for like their activities or Is this private school? Tutoring. 
It could be. Private yeah. school, if yeah. They, if they are paying, it's gonna be private school. Entertainment, 1,275. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Uh. <laughs> they seem like a very like family-oriented. That's probably geared towards the kids more yeah, than that's like, true. paying for their own That's true. No, 100%. They're devoting most of that money to their kids, not to themselves. That's mm -hmm. true. Household, 1121. I'm guessing that's random miscellaneous items. Clothing, look at yeah. that. Subscriptions, 128 a month. Gas, wow, gas, what? $28 a month. Yeah, I mean, he's driving a Tesla, so that makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so funny that Kevin has his Tesla. It's like plastered with his face in his real estate business. I love that. It's awesome. <laughs> 23 and 24, that is Dang. nuts. We missed it. <laughs> By a mile. Okay, so you have one million. So me and my lonely million. million. <laughs> I mean, if it's so lonely, you can give it to me. <laughs> if I was in that position, I would start being more defensive and just slow down with my lifestyle. I mean, the lifestyle difference between somebody who's a DECA millionaire and somebody who's a $100 million net worth or even a billion dollar net worth, there's not that much difference in the quality of life. Yeah, where they are right now, I don't think they should be stopping because they just got to this point. They need to be able to like extend it as much as they can. That is the big, big thing because it's easy for me to sit here and be like, well, I would be slowing down. I don't think that's true either. I think if I was in his position, I would work probably even extra hard because I don't think it's really possible for anybody, especially at Kevin's age, who's I'm assuming 30 years old, uh, to just slow down at the peak of their career. Mm -hmm. Like you never stop the race when you're ahead, right? Right. You want to finish. And I don't know what that means for Kevin, but I know that when you're doing extremely well and you're at the peak of your career, that is the moment that I think is the most difficult to leave and stop. So I decided to start a YouTube channel and share all of the experiences I had and mostly all of the things I screwed up on to try to help people prevent making the same stupid mistakes that I had made. I think my biggest financial mistake must have cost me probably more an opportunity cost rather than actual upfront cost because mm. I'm so defensive with my investments. If anything, it was selling an asset too early rather than investing my money somewhere and then losing it. But I've still made my plenty of fair share of mistakes, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through all of them, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The most I've ever made in a single month in real estate, that would be real estate commissions and investing in real estate, would be around $150,000 in just one month, which is absolutely amazing. But the most I've ever made in a month from YouTube has been a million and seventy thousand dollars. So moral of the story, drop everything you're doing and start a YouTube channel. What are you waiting for? I mean, it just goes to show you though, $150,000 in ad revenue, that leaves 850,000, or actually 920,000 if you include the 70. 920,000 is not from ad revenue. That's affiliates, that's any courses that he's selling. What's Teachable? Teachable is where he sells his courses. Ah, oh, and is that link down in the description? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't have my affiliate link set up, please. <laughs> okay, so YouTube ad revenue, $237,000 for the month, which is crazy, because I don't think I've ever broken six figures in ad revenue in any given month of my career, ever. Mm. But this is only my second year, so I'm on the come up. <laughs> Affiliates, $162,000. Affiliates are basically when people click on his link and then they, you know, sign up to other programs like Webull and M1. So if he refers people to those investing platforms, then he gets a set commission. I know because I get the same, except... Uh, not, not that same amount. <laughs> not quite that same amount. Lauren's real estate salary, $20,000. So for managing all of their real estate properties, they pay themselves, they, she pays herself a salary, Kevin pays himself $10,000. And I'm guessing it's less just because he doesn't need to pay himself more. What an incredible fluctuation between 200,000 to 1.15. <laughs> I mean, there were two months this year during the pandemic where we crossed seven figures in a month. I remember watching Graham's videos and seeing he was making $140,000 a month. And I was like, oh my God, that's insane. And it is insane, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then when you see a million dollars a month, I don't know why, but my tiny brain doesn't relate to a million dollars a month. 
I almost become disconnected to the point where it's the opposite of inspiration. It makes me feel worse about myself. Oh my, you're right. Not that I was like jealous. It has nothing to do with, you know, reflecting on what I thought about Kevin's success, but it was more about like me beating myself up for not being good enough. And then I took a step back and I was like, whoa, slow down, dude. You are making seven figures a year still, like a million dollars a year. Like you can not be happy about that because someone else is making a million a month. I feel like we all have those thresholds after which point we disconnect from them and then it's not inspiring anymore. I think that's definitely your perspective. Yeah. And that's totally fair. I think there are people out there and I don't know where the majority is, but that his story is inspiring. Oh, the 100%. one million, and it's not like I, I know they had the the goal for the the construction and the real estate sales to be making them a million a year. Maybe that is someone's goal. I mean, that's they, true. They should go for that. <laughs> I'm not trying to discourage anybody from having big dreams. I'm just speaking for myself. No, big dreams are possible though. It's like you just build them up. Yeah, yeah for you build, sure. Build them up, and then maybe you're just surprised one day. Just like I'm sure that they were. I do think with Kevin. It's in his nature to always work and he kind of gets like a high from making money and so I respect that that's something he will always want to do and I think he always will do it. Do you also get a high from earning money? No. Do you feel like it's a, it's a little bit of a high seeing how much money you make? No, not, not at all. No? Nope. What do you feel when you see the, the amount of money that you are earning? Gosh. If anything, I get a high of figuring out a puzzle. Like to me, YouTube and just life and the whole money issue is like a puzzle that I'm always trying to solve. And it's like, how do I solve this little puzzle? And I guess one of the ways of seeing that you have solved it or you're solving it is by earning money. That's a really easy scoreboard, right? Mm -hmm. But there's other results, you know, whether that's, you know, uh, building a brand and people admiring you or whatever it is, that it, that's very pleasant to be respected for the work that you do. And I think above all else, it's not just the money, it's, first of all, it's having the option to do whatever you want in life, mm -hmm. but also succeeding at what you're doing and then having people recognize that success. And I think that's extremely important for all of us, no matter if you're a YouTube star or whoever you are, whoever you're trying to be, that it's important to do meaningful work and work that you will ultimately be recognized for. You're saying like it's a puzzle, but I feel like it's more like like a magic trick. It is. That you want to figure out it the, is. the secret. The secret to it. Yes, mm -hmm. this is true. Congratulations, you guys. Congratulations, Kevin, Lauren. You guys are awesome. We love you and keep hustling and keep being awesome. Rito says the same. He agrees. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Aw.